guys, this is Kathy here on my YouTube channel, Kathy's World. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you're here today. Today is Halloween, so happy Halloween to you. I'll be going out tonight to watch my grandkids trick or treat, all except for Caleb, because Caleb, he's dressing up as a ghost and he's going trick or treating with his friend. So I'm glad for him. I hope to see him before he goes out. I want to see him in his ghost costume. So today we're going to just have a little reading vlog, talk a little bit about reading, a little bit about family, and then end up on some reading and maybe a quote. The book I'm reading right now is called Infinite. It's a sci-fi, it's got doppelgangers in it, which I had to look up the word, which just means like I think a replica or a duplicate. There are parallel universes, and when you live in a parallel universe in this book, you look exactly the same, you have some of the same traits, but you may be entirely different. In one world, you may be a really nice person. In the other world, not so much. I typically don't like sci-fi, but this book is kind of sucking me in. It's a good book to read when I take my three mile walks. It holds my attention. I wanna know what's gonna happen next. I wanna know who's coming into whose world. So it's really, it's a good read so far. And I am listening to it on Audible. And I'm enjoying the narrator on Audible too. So it's, it's easy to listen to, it's interesting, and I'm enjoying the read so far, or the listen so far. I think the book was almost 10 hours, but it's going really fast, I'm surprised. Sometimes books drag on and on when you listen to them, but this one not so much, so I would recommend it. And I will give you a review on this book on my next five book reading wrap up too. Somebody on Goodreads said this about this book. This is the first book I've read by Brian Freeman, and I loved it. Parallel worlds with similarities of Jack the Ripper murders. The ending was hang on to your seat thrilling. So it's definitely a good book. The next one I just started that I'm reading the physical copy of, and I'm on page, what page am I on? 144. It's called We Are the Brennans, a novel by Tracy Lang. And here's what one Goodreads person said. Reading this novel, I can tell that the author, coming from a large Irish family herself, knows the ins and outs of family dynamics. This was a very enjoyable read that touched upon the complexities of family life, including secrets, trust, love, discovering that even your parents are not perfect. What? While still holding on to the strong family bonds formed as they were growing up. So I'm finding this interesting. Slow at times, it's definitely, I would call it a family drama. You're getting to know the characters whom I like for the most part. I, I like a book that kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat. This doesn't, it's kind of like a slow burn, getting to know the family, getting to know the problems. And so far I'm enjoying it. I'd probably give it like a 3.5 at this point, but you know, it may go higher, we'll see. As far as family, we've been to, since I last did one of these vlogs, we've been to the zoo, I've been twice actually. I went with, Erica and her two little girls, Jane and Riley, and I went with Maggie and Caleb. I took them down one day. And as you'll see in some of the pictures, Caleb, he's always willing to jump in and get his picture taken. Maggie, it's a little bit harder to get her picture. But we saw some chimpanzees, we saw giraffes. And if you've ever been to the North Carolina Zoo, it is just, it's massive, it's vast. So they don't have the animals in small enclosures. They take really good care of the animals. But in order for them to take care of the animals, you have to walk quite a long ways. And Maggie said, I am not riding the tram. So Caleb and Maggie and I trudged from North America to Africa and everything in between. And we got a really good workout. When I went with Jane and Riley, we got to feed the giraffe. And Jane was so excited. I'll try to put that video within this video. And she just giggles. It's so cute. I took a picture of a few things. Flamingos, gorillas. I think that's a warthog, but I think it has another name. Rattlesnakes, ostriches, giraffes, and some kind of skink, I think. And then we also saw chimpanzees, which they're always very active, if you know what I mean. Had to turn the kids' heads away at times. <laughs> As far as Halloween, I bought some pumpkins. I thought, how can Jane, who's 18 months old, best decorate these pumpkins? So I got some stickers, and I watched the kids two days a week. And so I brought the I brought the pumpkins in, we got the stickers, and Jane just was piling stickers all over the place. She would have one little spot, put a sticker, sticker on top of that, sticker on top of that, but it was her own artistic invention, so I left it as it was. And there's a picture of her playing with her toys with her creation beside her. Uh, Riley was over and she had a little cat outfit on and I had cat ears for my costume so I stuck the little cat ears on her. It looks so cute. When Maggie and Kayla spent the night with me last weekend I believe it was, 
they had a Halloween event in my development. So we went and one thing they had was a cakewalk. And I really, I'd heard of cakewalks, but I really had not done one before or really known what it was. So Maggie, Caleb and I, we decided to participate in the cakewalk. So they had a table lined up with all these cakes on it. And someone would win with each cakewalk they did, and they did many, because there were, I think there were like 17 spots, which weren't many. So you start off on a number, and the music starts. You walk around, walk around, and when the, when the music stops, you stop on a number. They call out a number at random, and that's who wins the cakewalk. Caleb was on seven, and Maggie and I were on 13. So I was saying, seven, 13, seven, 13. And they said 13, and Maggie was so excited. So she walked up and got six cupcakes, and she was just so proud. It was fun. And we all shared the cupcakes, of course. We let Maggie pick out the first one, as it should be. Then, was it last night? I think it might have been, or the night before. I'm so confused. I think it might have been last night. I went with um, the Von Cannons. I went with Erica, Josh, Riley, and Jane to Hillsborough, North Carolina, where they were having a big Halloween event. All the stores are participating. People were handing out candy. There were decorations. There were pumpkin carvings. It was so, so nice. The police station there, they had um, a trunk or treat all set up and they were giving out candy and it was just so nice. It felt like a real community. I thought I want to live there. Just really, really nice. Jane was dressed as a tiger and she goes roar. She goes learn how to roar. Uh, Riley was dressed as an owl and so that was really cute. I was dressed as a cat. As you can see in one of the pictures, I have Riley with me and I'm sitting by this handsome skeleton and I got a little flirty. I put my hand on his leg. It was fun. Erica was a zookeeper, and her husband was a panda, and then the two kids were animals, and she was in charge of all of them. I was just a cat following along. As far as entertainment, I decided to watch a Halloween-based movie. So I started to watch Monster House on Netflix. It's a good movie. It's slightly dark. Let me read what it says about it. No adults believe three youths' assertions that a neighboring residence is a living creature that means them harm. With Halloween approaching, the trio must find a way to destroy the structure before innocent trick-or-treaters meet ghastly ends. So it was it's a good movie, but like I said, it is dark. I don't know that Caleb might be fine with it, but Maggie's a little bit too young for it. I put a trailer on my blog, which I'll link in the description box for you so you can take a look at the trailer if you're interested. But like I said, it's a good movie. I would oddly call it kind of a love story. I don't know if you've seen the movie Up. Now that was a love story. That was adorable. This does not have quite that sweetness that Up had, but it is in its own way a strange love story. On Hulu, I'm watching a miniseries. It has Michael Keaton in it. It's called Dope Sick, and it's all about the opioid crisis and Oxycontin and oh my, it is so good. I think I've watched four or five episodes and I read somewhere that there's eight total, so there's still more coming. But if you have any interest in the opioid crisis and Purdue Pharma and what happened with that, it's really, really interesting to me. And I can look back and see some of the things that happened. I'm a nurse, and the years this was happening, I was nursing, and I, um, I guess I was there when they developed the fifth vital sign, which is pain. Because we would all, in the emergency room, we'd always use a scale of one to 10. Where's your pain level? They use that, Purdue Pharma used that in order to up the amount of Oxycontin you were taking. They also coined the term breakthrough pain, which I've heard, it seems like forever, but they would use that and say if you had breakthrough pain, that you need to up your dose. That's the only problem. And they would, they were very adamant that this drug was not addictive. If it's crazy to me that that was even allowed to happen. And you're seeing people trying to, you're seeing the addiction start and you're seeing people trying to fight Purdue Pharma. And it's really an interesting show. And here's how the New York Times describes the show. A Hulu miniseries traces the story of Oxycontin from the offices of Purdue Pharma to the examining room of an Appalachian doctor played by Michael Keaton, Dope Sick, Hulu's ambitious and intermittently compelling miniseries about the role of Purdue Pharma and the opioid crisis is built around the theme of pain. I found it very interesting. I'm excited to continue watching it. My next upcoming read, 
This is a brand new book for the month of November. It was just released. It's called The Fortune Cookie Writer by Nina Navisky. Navisky? Navisky, I think that's right. Nina, Nina Navisky writes with a warm hand that leads readers into thought-provoking moments with its delicate probe into the circles of life, restarts, and the process of discovery. The fortune cookie writer will delight. And this is about a woman who's been through a divorce and now she's broke. She works by day as a dog walker and at night she writes fortune cookies. And then someone offers her a job making meals for an elderly lady. And she gets to know this elderly lady who has a piano in her apartment and she gets to know her a little bit. In the meantime, she has a son who's musically oriented but seems to have some issues. They call them peculiar behaviors. And I think it's all gonna come together this lady has a piano in her apartment. Her, uh, this woman, her Marissa is her name. Marissa has a little boy who's musically gifted. And I think they'll somehow come together to help one another is what I'm hoping. So I'm divorced. So I think that's kind of what I wanted to read about. Her new beginning, her new start. This book to me sounds inspiring. So I'm looking forward to reading this. And I will leave you with a quote. This is a quote, a book I read last time, and I'll link my five book reading wrap up in the description box for you in case you wanna hear about the books I read last month. This book is called The Whisper Man. And here's a quote from The Whisper Man. It's kind of a scary book. It was great for October. Courage is not the absence of fear, Pete knew. Courage requires fear. Makes total sense to me. I mean, how can you be courageous if you're not afraid to do something? You have to have a little fear in order to be courageous to go out and conquer that fear. So I like that quote and it really fits the book too. All right guys, that's it for my reading and more vlog. I hope everything is going well in your world. I'd love to know what you're reading. I'd love to know what you did for Halloween and I will see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.